What's happening guys? Silent Mike with another a technique check. If you're new to this series, it's me critiquing, helping you guys become better lifters. If you want to get involved, three reps at 70% landscape widescreen, email it to ask M I K K E at gmail.com. If you also want to get involved, be sure to subscribe, thumbs up, comment below if you guys are digging the series. Now let's start. My man, we got a deadlift form check for this whole video deadlift time. Uh, reps actually look pretty dang decent, my man. You got a lot of neck movement, so I try to focus in on keeping that more stagnant, keeping it in place. Fix your eyes on something off in the distance. For your particular form, I'd probably say uh, stick to something just on the horizon. Um, the other thing is I would try to flex those lats a little bit more. Um, squeeze the bar as tight as you can. Try to cover your armpit with your shoulder. It just looks like they're a little bit loose. Squeezing them as much as you can will keep your upper back tight. Also keep your midsection locked in, and then you can just press with your legs. Uh, otherwise, it looks very, very solid. You may be able to experiment with a little bit wider stance. Um, it may help you keep the bar a little bit closer to your body, as uh, with this stance right here, your hands come into a lot of contact with your thigh. Again, not wrong, but the less friction of your hands on your thigh, perhaps it may be a little better off in the future. So if you lock it in a little bit wider, lock your lats in, get your weight falling back, and keep that shit, that bar right against your shins and your quads. It's hard to tell from this angle. Uh, typically, typically, if you guys can send me a video from the front and the side, we could better tell. Um, but as much as you can keep that bar into your body, the better off. Now we got some conventional action. Oh my, my man is jacked, rocking them 20s arms. Gets in a pretty decent position here from uh, the start, I could tell. Um, we probably want to keep your hips a little bit higher. One, you can see that belt position. It's getting a little crooked. And two, uh, from this position, your hips shoot up anyways. So what we want to do is perhaps try pulling up your belt just a bit in the front, uh, a little bit higher on your stomach. It'll keep it flatter in the back. Breathe and brace into your stomach. I want hips a little bit higher. And then what we need you to do is get that body weight falling backwards. So we want your hips moving further away from the bar towards this pillar back here on the left or towards this lady doing the push-ups. What we want is your bum covering this lady's head. Right there you see how it's low and then it's going to shoot straight up. What I'd rather have is those hips a little bit higher and have that lady uh, trying to do her plyometrics back there or calisthenics and your ass all up on her face. Um, so hips a little higher, we'll flatten that back. Hips a little bit further back, we'll get the tension in your hamstrings and glutes and allow you to uh, pull directly from the ground, keeping that tension without your hips rising up. And as the weights get heavier, again, you'll build the proper musculature in your hamstrings and glutes rather than putting a lot of that force in your uh, lower back and quads. Again, your lower back and quads will be used in all these movements. We're basically using our entire body during the deadlift. Uh, but we just want to keep that tension a little bit better. See right here, your knee is going forward. It's okay in the conventional deadlift. It may happen depending on how you're built. Uh, but what you don't want to do is at the start is you don't want to push your knees forward and drop your chest forward. You'd rather push your hips back. And then if your ha knees have to go forward to get to the barbell, that's fine. The other thing I suggest for 99% uh, of you guys is to not do touch and go reps. Uh, I know there's some decent arguments out there and there's some very big lifters that do do touch and go. Uh, but for the majority of people, I'd say make the lift more difficult in training than it is in uh, competition. And obviously competition, you're just doing a one rep max, dead stop from the ground. And in training, if you're doing touch and go, especially with a bumper plate, even if you're under control, you will get a little bit of rebound um, and, and more time under tension, plus controlling the barbell both ways. You see you hit your knees there on the way down. That's because you're bending forward and not pushing your hips back. If you push your hips back, touching your hamstrings and glutes, you won't bump into your knees, and that bar path will be able to be straight up and down. And in a perfect world, that, that bar path may even come backwards in a slight slant towards your body. Uh, and that's what I believe to be optimal in both the conventional uh, and even more so in the sumo. The conventional typically more straight up and down, but right there in that position, you're too far in front of the bar with both your shoulders and your knees and all that loads in your low back. Loads on your low back, again, ladies and gentlemen, is not optimal when we're talking deadlifts. Hopefully you guys are enjoying this series. We're dropping it every Sunday, hopefully some type of gym vlog every Tuesday, Thursday, and Saturday. We're keeping it. Uh, some kind of instructional, some kind of technique. We're moving back to the sumo world. I'm not a big fan of the mirror, uh, so I'm already going to say that. If you can, force yourself to pull away from the mirror. Um, it's going to just treat you uh, better body awareness, spatial uh, awareness. 
Uh, and then the number two, what I'm going to say here is we want to move those hands in a little bit. Uh, and some people may have an argument with this, uh, but what I believe to be optimal is always a straight line from your shoulder to the bar, even if you're not on the knurling. Uh, even myself, I'll have one finger a little bit on the smooth part, uh, both when I'm uh, trying to hook grip, if I'm using straps, or if I'm going mixed grip. I like the, twindle, the twinkle fingers right there, giving himself some good luck uh, before he's setting up. Everything else looks pretty solid. Besides, I, I don't love that touch and go again, and I don't love the kind of grip and rip that you're throwing down there. Um, if you're just diving down, grabbing the bar and ripping up, it doesn't give your body or your mind time to get tension into those hamstrings again. And you can see on that first rep, your hips shoot way up. A lot of the load goes into your low back, and we're not pulling with the popper musculature. Uh, technique in all three lifts, uh, but especially in the deadlift, uh, you always hear about people snapping their shit up and getting injured. It's important because it allows us to lift the most amount of weight. It allows us to be more efficient, and being more efficient, again, does lift us... Uh, allow us to lift the most amount of weight typically, but it'll allow us to handle more volume in our training, more volume, more reps, more intensity, and it'll allow you to lift more o over a long period of time. It'll allow you to lift more in the short period of time because it's more efficient, and because you can handle more technique, it'll allow you to lift more weight in the long term, uh, as well as obviously it's going to build the most uh, the proper amount of musculature. I've talked about it many times. You see that back giveaway. Uh, if you have a ginormous erectors, you're probably pulling incorrectly. We, the erectors are not a mover in this move uh, in this deadlift. They're they're a stabilizer. They're stabilizing our hip to our shoulder. The main movers should be in the sumo, our quads, hamstrings, and glutes. Uh, our lats again are a stabilizer. So they build those muscles, um, but they shouldn't be overdrawn. A little overarched here in the beginning, and then because you're trying to keep your back flat. But the reason your back's not flinging, staying flat is because you're grabbing and ripping. So I'd rather have you have a neutral chest here. If you breathe into your stomach and almost crunch down a little bit, then we'll have a straight line from our shoulder to our glutes, rather than you have this kind of arch here. And then as soon as you rip, it's going to go the opposite. So you have that little arch, you pull it, and boom, we're going concave to convex. We're going uh, overextended to a uh, flexed position, and that's not optimal again. So take your time to grab the bar. Let's face away from the mirror. Once we grab the bar, let's get some tension into our hamstrings, into our glutes before pulling. When we pull, we're not, uh, it's kind of think about a, a really fast car. If you floor it, you're going to peel out and you're going to stay in the same place for a little while before you go. Rather, we just hit the gas a little bit and get it moving. We're going to go zero to about 20 miles per hour while we're getting tension through our system. And then we're going to floor it. Then we're going to go from 20 to 120 real quick. Everything else looks pretty solid. Um, the touch and go is just getting you, you can see the shock and the slow motion there. It's just going to get you more and more out of position. The more fatigued you get and the more reps you do. You're kind of squatting the weight up with your low back again. Here we're going back to conventional. I like the mixture that we're dealing with here trying to help you guys. Pretty dang decent. Oh, and then we're going Speedy Gonzalez off this. So it's not always about how fast or explosive you think you're moving. When you're doing touch and go again, you're, you're going to be missing a couple inches off the ground there. Uh, right here, you can see him bend his chest forward and knees forward, just like our other conventional puller. Rather than hips backwards, pulling that bar into us, using that bar as kind of a teeter-totter or a counterweight for our body. See how much of his chest is in front of the bar? And then his hips go straight down. We don't want your hips down and chest forward. We want your hips backwards until your chest falls forward. The shock, again, from the touch and go is so apparent in all these pullers when they're uh, here in the slow-mo. You, you can see your bicep bend back and forth, which is putting a lot of pressure on that bicep. And one day, God forbid, I don't wish this upon anyone, but it can cause a bicep tear. It's happened time and time again. Um, so, again, straps, hook grip, or... If you are going to go double over, or excuse me, mixed grip, you must pay attention to what you're doing. Um, a little bit looser belt for a lot of these people can help as well. Then you can really tighten up your midsection by breathing. We have the same issue here of the squatting, and this one might be even worse. Um, we have a bent arm and a round back at the starting position, which is just oh so dangerous. Uh, one cue that can help a lot of people is flexing that tricep, showing that horseshoe off to the world, trying to show the camera uh, how jacked you are in the triceps. For this gentleman right here, let's try to move your stance in. A little bit narrower stance will allow us to push our hips back further. You do have a long torso, but you also have some long arms. So I think with a narrower stance, you can see that position right there. The knees go forward and hips go under. We don't want that. We want hips up and back towards that red plate or to that safety. You want to fall backwards. Appreciate you guys. Thumbs up.
Like that bitch, share, subscribe. We'll be back with another one coming Tuesday.